Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at Expedition's Gears of Corruption. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome back to Siberia, folks. We are once again going to be launching expeditions into this frigid wasteland that is beset by mysterious purple corruption. And I'm going to be showing you how the game works today using the additional components that come with its first First expansion, Gears of Corruption. And before I get playing, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on what's new, Magoo. First of all, there's two new mechs. The Scarecrow, which is awesome looking, and the uh, Mole, also very, very cool looking. And each of them has uh, unique special abilities. I'm going to be playing with the Scarecrow today, so you'll see that in action soon enough. But here's the Mole, uh, if you would like. Uh, basically, both the Scarecrow and the Mole give you another use for map tokens that you collect throughout the game. Now, another thing I should say is uh, that comes with dual layer boards for everything, with individual tracks for your guile and power so that they don't get um, you know mixed up, which is very, very appreciated, I must say. And it's not just for the new. Uh, there are basically dual layer boards for every mech from the original game as well. So, we've got some new mechs. We've also got some new playable characters. Four of them in in fact. And um, I'm just going to go on ahead and put them on screen. And if you want, you can pause and read what their abilities are. I'm just going to present them without comment. Uh, but they do a bunch of really cool things. And probably the most far out weird one is this new character, Balayon, and his companion, Zephon, who is actually one of the corrupted. So, a very mysterious character. And probably Probably the most unique character in the game. So I'm going to go on ahead and play with Balai on today. But um, as you can see, there are other characters. Now, um, in addition to other characters and mechs, there are five new cards that get added into the gigantic deck of cards that you find. Each one of them is an item, actually. Uh, and that's, by the way, a green. My green screen just doesn't like it. So, again, if you want to know more about them, you can just go on ahead and pause and read the descriptions. And I'll just go on ahead and uh, shuffle them into the deck. Or I'll just kind of thread them throughout. We'll see uh, if we see any of these popping up throughout. And then just give it one more quick shuffle. Whee! All right. So, uh, new characters, a few new item cards... But that's kind of burying the lead. Uh, there's, uh, but, but oh, before we get to the big stuff, let's talk uh, about uh, something else. This is very, very cool. Um, cards for each of the mechs, the ones that are in the base game, plus the expansion. And what you can use these for are two things. First of all, the maybe the biggest change of the game is that we no longer start the game, you know, just kind of a scrubby nothing nobody with no, without two sticks to, to rub together. We actually get to start with resources depending on which mech. I am the Scarecrow, so I'm starting with five power and one guile. Uh, whereas, you know, hey, if I was going to be using uh, the Marsh Strider, it's just all guile all the time. Or, heck, the uh, the old Highlander from the original game, three guile, three um, power, which is nice. But you're all saying, hey, what's that? What's that thing right there? Well, no matter what mech you start with, you always start with a worker. Used to be we had to run out and recruit workers, and there was kind of a race to do it, but now everybody starts with a gold worker. This is basically you. This is represents you, and um, it's a wild. So it counts as all the colors and can activate any card power. So between starting with power and guile and a worker, that can really significantly speed up the early portion of the game. Oh, and there's another thing as well. Um, uh, to create a uh, bonus for players who come later in turn order, there's a new way you can start the game where you lay all of the, uh, whatchamacallem, the cards out for all the mechs, and then you randomly assign to each mech a different leader. 
And then, you know, I mean, you know, for, for all of them. And then in reverse turn order, last player gets first dibs on picking the combination of mech and companion and uh, leader type. So, some of these cards combo with mechs better than others. Some people might value um, certain powers of the mechs more than others. And so, if you are later in turn order, you get a wider variety of combos to choose from. Now, that's an optional way. You can also just play where everybody gets a random character character in a random mech. But today I'm playing with the Scarecrow, I'm playing with the mysterious new playable character, and um, you're right out of the gate. If you know Expeditions, you probably realize just how big a deal it is to start with resources and a worker right out of the gate. So the beginning of the game changes quite a bit, and I'll demonstrate that, but also the middle at the end of the game changes significantly as well. Because you may be wondering, hey, why are all the, um, oh, what do you even call them? Glory. Why are all the glory spaces covered up by this card? And why is there a mech on that card? Well, that's because, as part of setup, you pick one of the unused mechs, and it becomes the corrupted mech. This is going to be something that shows up probably about a third of the way, midway through the game. As soon as anybody is the first player to be able to put one of their glory tokens on the board, the corruption mech erupts and will start chasing us around and hounding us, but also giving us extra opportunities. And also, not for nothing, tightening up the board a little bit as well by its very presence. So at the beginning of the game, the corruption mech is just waiting until I score some glory. Oh, and hey, by the way, you may notice, what is this? Green glory? Yes, um, this expansion expands the uh, player count and adds a new player color. Uh, olive, um, you know, military green to the proceedings. So anyway, I can't show you this right away, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's actually start playing so you can get a sense for how turbocharged the game is compared to our original. And I should say, by the way, folks, I'm going to be playing solo. When I did my run-through of Expeditions, what was it, a year ago, I guess, I played with Alex, and so we demonstrated two players. So I figured today I'll demonstrate solo, which means there are already two mechs on the board representing a lost expedition that came into Siberia long ago, and they tend to teleport around because they've discovered portal technology. And they're uh, basically hoovering up resources and stuff that I want to get. They kind of replicate um, other players getting all the cards and rewards that I might be chasing after. So anyway, they're ready to go. I'm ready to go. I will be the first player. And uh, like always, as my first turn, I get to move, play, and gather in any order I want. And so, I think the first thing to do is move. Here I am off on the side uh, lines. And you know, normally, traditionally, first player is probably going to go grab um, some workers over at the sawmill, or maybe some over at the settlement. But now that I've already got a wild worker that can activate either of my starting cards, I'm not so heavily incentivized to do that. And in fact, I might do something completely different. Um, you may have noticed one other change. These are not the map tokens we're used to. In the original game, you have these little map tokens that, hey, the first player to explore gets these. Um, they can be used for various and sundry things. Now, there's bigger purple ones. There's actually two that are left in the box, so you can never be sure exactly which ones are out there. But um, first player to explore gets these map tokens. They function the same as in the original game, plus they give you an extra bonus. Now, you have no idea what the bonus will be, and so it's always a little dangerous to explore. In the same way, it's dangerous to explore because you might find a tile you're not into. You might also find a bonus you're not into. But the fact that these give you extra stuff makes them much more valuable. So you would not uh, find it at all unusual now for people to eschew the normal opening turns and instead rush right out into the tundra. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move, which gives me three steps. Remember, I'm moving, playing, and gathering any order, so I moved. I'm ending here. And what did I get? Boom. I got an item card. Uh, and phew, that's a close one. Because uh, it just so happens there is one item card available. The hover coil. Okay. And 
I would have been very, very sad if I had found this. And, you know, it could have been that there were no. There might have just been all quests and meteors. That's why it's always dangerous. And I'll talk about this in my final thoughts. Because overall, spoiler alert, folks, I love this expansion. It's such a radical improvement to the game, with one exception. Random luck of the draw with these. Because you can go out and explore, and it turns out, oh, you get nothing. You get no bonus. Now, whether you whether there was this or not, and I do get it, so it goes into my active pile, which normally is supposed to be over here, but I'm just putting them down here, um, which means I've got to uh, refresh to get that card into my hand, which is up there. But anyway, I also do have this. And um, because I am the Scarecrow, I want more Explore Tokens. Yes, getting five Explore Tokens can be a glory, but giving uh, for me, with the Scarecrow, whenever I refresh in the future, I can spend one of these to get a bonus action. So resting plus a move or play or gather is an awesome thing to do. So I want to make sure I've got plenty of map tokens on hand so that every time I refresh, I get a bonus action out of it. So anyway, so I've moved. I found something that gave me a nice little bonus. And what did I discover? It is the warehouse. Okay, location 9C. So now I am also going to get to play one of my cards and I'm going to get to gather. But before I do that, I need to um, put out some corruption. So out comes the corrupt chicken cup. Of course, yes, the game comes with a cloth bag. You use that. But a chicken cup of corruption is much nicer, don't you think? So, let's see. Five plus. I draw... and Oh, it's just a five. Just like that. Okay. So, there's only one corruption tile there. Now, I have done my move. I have not done my play or my gather yet. I'm in undiscovered country. And I think, before I'm going to bother start playing... I will gather, which means I interact with the tile I'm on. Now, because there's this corruption, I can't meld a meteorite. Not that I have a meteorite card anyway. So instead, I'm going to gather by interacting with this. Oh, which, by the way, oops, a new card should have come out. And it's another meteor. So this says, hey, interact with one and get the power of one of the adjacent cards. As we are reminded on our handy-dandy player aid. Uh, right. Oh, but I'm sorry, no, it's not uh, get the power. I was thinking of the uh, this one, you know, which is activate uh, the power of a location next to you. I just get one of these three cards. So, right out of the gate, I've got two cards. I've doubled the size of my deck in this deck builder. So, what do I want? Do I want the Sunstone? Do I want the quest to talk with the protectors of the cave? Or do I want the Callstone? Okay, those are two meteorites, or there's a quest. Now, here's the deal. I'm kind of tempted. I'm kind of tempted to get the quest because um, me being a weird, mysterious, corrupted character with a very scary monster by my side, I've got a very interesting way to deal with quests. Most players, if they got this quest, well, hey, it gives them a power until they eventually complete it by finding location seven and then spending a bunch of guile and completing the quest and getting points and all that. But my buddy here says, hey, whenever I activate it, I can basically. Um, you know, basically trash one of the corruption tokens I've collected so far and just instantly finish the quest. So it's like, well, okay, yeah, I could go talk to the protectors of the cave or I could just have my corrupt uh, monster companion eat the protectors of the cave. And either way, the quest is completed. So I've got a better way to go about getting quests than most people. But I've got a real restriction too. Because my companion does not let me vanquish. You know, vanquish is one of the most important actions of the main game. It's how we clear the corruption out of the world, and we collect these, and these are worth points, and hey, sometimes you can use these for various and sundry actions. Like, I don't know, feed the corruption tokens to your corrupt monster so that they will instantly complete quests for you in the most gory way possible. So, because... I am a creature of the corruption. I can't vanquish corruption. I have no way to do that out of the gate, which is why it's very important for me to find some way to vanquish. And it just so happens both of these meteor cards give me a vanquish bonus. So I think I'm going to snag one of them. I'm going to harvest one of them. I'll take the coal stone, which again goes into my spent area. I won't be able to play it until I refresh. I'll get it back later. That's fine. So, that I've moved. I've gathered. Oh, by the way, a new card comes out. And hopefully I'll get this. Because um, as this character, it is so easy for me, once I've collected some corruption tokens, to just finish quests. I can be a quest-finishing machine. I can finish quests faster than anybody else in the game. I don't get the immediate benefits from them, but I do get the compound benefits by tucking them and all the rest of it. So anyway, 
I'll go on ahead and take that so that I'll have a Vanquish ability in my back pocket because I'm the only player, I think, who starts without it right from the get-go. And now, I still have to play a card. And, um, see... In regular, you would not want to rush right out and do this because you'd play a card and you wouldn't get to activate the power because you haven't gotten any workers yet. I have a worker that can activate anything. So I'm going to go on ahead and play a card right now. And I think it'll be me, myself, and my character, which is interesting. Because, see, I don't vanquish to um, you know destroy the corruption of the land. I can just claim the corruption, no matter what its cost is. Gain the top corruption accessible at my location, except for the 20-point 20 20 super one that's at Tarkovsky's lair. Or, instead, I can pay a guile and a strength to meld a meteor right now. So I am playing this. I am activating it with my wild. Normally, you can't activate your cards. You just get the, the, the main benefit, but not the uh, worker benefit, because you haven't gotten workers yet. But I'm doing it right off the bat. So anyway, I'm getting some guile. Yay. I'm feeling much smarter. And I am going to do this. I am going to gain this. Boom. So I just got some corruption without having to burn through five points of power like any other player. Players would have to burn through their power to do it. Me, I can conserve my power to use on quests. If I'm not feeding quests to my companion, that is. Anyway, though. So um, I just claim that right out of the gate. And hey... Look at what we've got here, a nice little potential combo. Uh, because this um, meteorite, if I meld it to my mech, then I get one buck per five value corruption token. And that's what I just picked up. Very, very nice. And this is where I can do that melding. So I might soon have a uh, meteorite encrusted mech. We'll see how things go. But anyway. That was my turn. It is now um, the Automa's turn. Uh, since I'm playing solo, there are basically these two ghost mechs. Or, I forget the exact story. They, they, they were previous expeditions that fell into a wormhole, and now they're out of phase with reality. So for the most part, they just move around without revealing things, and mostly just block me or you know take stuff I want to take, like a human player would. And occasionally they will show up, and over time, they'll become more corporeal and whatnot. Or, I forget the exact story, but uh, suffice to say, you just take their deck of cards. All right. Yeah. I've shuffled up one more time. They've got several different levels of challenge. I'm just on the medium level three difficulty. Although this is an alternate version of their card that came with the expansion. Anyway, let's see what they're up to. Right. Okay. First of all, time passes. This is a timer for them. And it's an alternate way the game could end now. If I don't get my uh, glory in gear and get my glory tokens out fast, they could get their glory out quicker than me. Anyway, so uh, every once in a while when they move forward, things will happen on their little track. And so the blue mech up here says, Hey, 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 if we've got six glory total, go on ahead and raid Karkovsky's lair, which is a big deal. Um, well, we haven't found Tarkovsky's lair yet. They don't have six, so they're not going to do that. So instead, Blue is just going to go tromping one, two, three. And like I said, they are out of phase with reality, so they don't actually reveal tiles. When I move around, or a human player moves around, we reveal tiles. When the corrupted mech... Oh, did I mention the corrupted mech, folks? Uh, this is another part of the Gears expansion. There is this little guy who eventually is going to end up on the board and become a much more active opponent for me and everybody else to deal with. You know, I worry about them later. Uh, the Corrupted Mech does not appear until somebody scores their first glory or until the AI's uh, tracker gets up there. Anyway, though, so they're just going to move three and, oh, hey, uh, this one says, sweep, sweep, okay, goodbye to the uh, quest to scout the abandoned base. If I wanted to do it, too bad, so sad. They uh, swept it away. And now it says, hey, if we've got one glory then go on ahead and explore. Otherwise, just move one step. So, they don't have any glory yet, so they're just going to move one step. But they did. I mean, like I said, any time, at any time, those cards could disappear, thanks to my buddy there. So, all right, I am up again. And now, I have to either move and gather, play and gather, or move and play. One of those options. And I gotta ask myself, do I want to gather, i.e. interact with this space? Because, hey, I could get another nearby card. This is a deck builder, or a hand builder, I guess you'd say. Um, or, 
do I meld this, thereby giving up this special power that I could use, uh, my ability to vanquish. Oh no! That's the problem. I want to get rid of it, but uh, because I, I could start scoring me points, but probably shouldn't do that till I get some more level 5 corruption. Plus, I need my ability to vanquish. But here's the thing. If I'm eventually going to tuck this, maybe I should go on ahead before I leave. I should grab that sunstone because then I've got two ways I could vanquish. Which, for a normal um, explorer, wouldn't worry so much because they can always vanquish themselves. But not me. because I can't vanquish the corruption because I am the corruption. So... I think I am going to gather. So it's either, am I going to play and gather or move and gather? Well, I don't have any more workers, so if I play, I won't get the full use of my card. So I think I will move and gather. And then I got to choose. Where am I going to go? Am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? Am I going to head back down here? I do, eventually, I do want to get a red, uh, a green worker so that I could activate the power of my hover coil. Oh, sorry, green on a green screen kind of messes up, but I need a green worker. So I could move and go one, two, three and come over here to the sawmill. But I want to find more corrupted workers because two of my cards require corrupted workers to activate. And one of these remaining spaces is the uh, hometown of Corrupted Worker Central or Corrupted uh, Explorers. So I really would like to find that. So how about I just start going this way, right? Um, with an eye towards picking up a green because it's not like I need the green anyway, not until I refresh my hand. So... I'm going to move and gather. And I could gather now, or I could gather over here, but you never know. I might not be happy with what I gather. So I'm going to gather right now. I'm not going to tuck this call stone yet. I'm just going to grab this sunstone. More stones for me, please, because that's more ways that I could vanquish. Okay, so that was my gathering. And oh, then the flex capacitor comes out. And now, off we go. And um, I have up to three steps, but because I moved into a new area, I'm going to stop. And let's see what my new upgraded map token gives me. Okay, activate an adjacent um, um, tile function. Which, I, there isn't one here. There isn't one here, so there's only this. That's not bad. It could have been worse. Like I said before, sometimes you come to these and it's like... like uh, I know one of them is a... Uh, <clears throat> get a reset all your cards. There's nothing worse in the world than getting that benefit to reset all your cards right after you spent a turn refreshing. And so effectively you get nothing. That has happened to me. And I'll be honest, I cursed Jamie Stegmeyer's name when it did. Uh, I'll talk about this more in the final thoughts, but I am not a fan of, hey, just see what you get. And hopefully you won't get screwed by getting something that's useless to you. As it is right now, this is useful. Because, hey, I'm going to activate, well, I guess the warehouse. Which means I could go on ahead and tuck my call stone, now that I've got a sunstone. Um, or I could grab another adjacent. Now, unfortunately... Uh, oh, wait, no! I could grab a meteor. And if I'm going to go cr uh, crazy for meteors, maybe I should go on ahead and grab another one. The hero stone. Which says, hey, when I meld this, get one per color among cards in hand. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's go on ahead and snag that. So I moved over here. My exploring got me a bonus reward. I mean, these. I mean, you are so incentivized to explore now, right out of the gate. The whole beginning of this game feels so different than it used to because of this expansion. But anyway, so I've moved over there. I've got another card. My hand is getting out of control, or my discard pile, or my active, it's called. Alrighty. So thank you, Hero Stone. And now let's see what I've actually found. It is the impact zone, not what I was hoping for. Okay. Alrighty, uh, do I have any quests that need to go there? Um, no, I don't have any quests at all. I've just got three meteors, so I'm going to start tucking them like crazy. But anyway, so I gathered here, and then I moved, um, uh, which gave me another bonus of activating this again. Fine. Pretty cool. Not what I was looking for, but I'm continuing my quest to get over to the sawmill. Meanwhile, my buddies say, hey, move our timer up, and we've just hit the spot that says, oh, we've gained a glory. Yay! Now, they don't gain specific types of glory. You just move, and you'll notice that they've got two players worth of glory here, because there are two of them. So anyway, they've gained their first glory. Good for them, which means, you know, if they'd already had it, they would have done some exploring in the first uh, round. 
So, um, and if they, if, you know, once they get there, right before they get their fourth glory, they will reveal or unleash the corrupted mech played here by the mole. Unless I do it first by getting any of my glory scored. Anyway, though, so it says, hey, do we have two glory? If so, vanquish. Nope. Okay, then just move. One, two, three, fine. This one says, do we have two glory? Vanquish. If not, just move one. Okay, fine. And if this one said move three, he would go one, two, and he would hopscotch over me um, and therefore block me from that space. Which would not be good. Uh, you know, again, you know, like a human player, they can be a bit of a pain. But anyway, so they only moved one, so they're just occupying spaces. Nothing got swept. It's my turn again. And so now, <clears throat> I must play a card this turn, and it's whether I'm going to play and move or am I going to play and gather. Well, the card I'm going to play is um, Zephon, who uh, I don't have. All right, so it just gives me some might. Oh wait a minute, did I? Did I get my might? I don't think I did. Folks, always watch with the Klingon subtitles because Paula will keep me on the straight and narrow. I should have gotten some guile when I played my own card, shouldn't I? Yes, I should have. So, I'm going to play this. That's going to give me some might. And since I don't have a purple worker, because I'm looking for him, I'm looking for him. They're out there somewhere. I will not be able to activate a face-up purple card ability or trash, which basically means, you know, duplicate my leader ability. Thanks, buddy. Or trash a corruption to uh, tuck a quest. Not that I want to. So I don't want to trash this corruption now. Oh, shoot. Folks, I totally forgot. Again, Klingon subtitles. Let's not forget, when I came here, there should have been some corruption showing up. And it was, oh, another five. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Because, you know, if this were a two and then like a three on top of it, like, okay, whatever. But I want to collect fives because I've got a goal for it. Maybe I don't want to rush away. Maybe I want to stay here and vanquish that thing using my own, uh, you know, using one of my two vanquish cards now. Although I do not have red or yellow workers, but remember, I've got my wild worker. So I could vanquish that. Yeah. Okay. And then I have two five. Then, once I vanquish it, by the way, I've got two different places I could meld. I'll score two points. I think it makes sense. I think originally I was going to keep on, keep on trucking. But no, I think instead, I'm just going to refresh. I want to get these cards because I want to get this thing before. I mean, it's unlikely that they'd come over here and vanquish it, but they could. You never know. So I think this turn, it's going to be... A refresh, which is the take a break, why don't you? Uh, have a nice cup of Siberian coffee. But more importantly, take all my cards and my worker back and put them back in my hand. <clears throat> and so this turn, I really didn't get to do anything. But next turn, I'll get to do three things. So, uh, and one of them is going to be clear this out. Probably another one is going to be meld um, that meteor and start scoring points off of these fibers I've got. Yeah. So that was it for me. Um, I'll, I'll stick it over to you yet, Sawmill. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to refresh because everything's coming up. Uh, my, my own unique way of fighting corruption. Okay. Let's see what our buddies are up to. They say our timer moves. Um, and I just want to move. They wrap around. One, two. And this one says, sweep. Sweep the leg, Johnny. And, okay. Oh, and there goes a meteor. And that makes me bummed. Because I would have liked to have grabbed another meteor. If I'm going for meteors, well, they just grabbed the Cypher Stone and the Flux Capacitor. Uh, right, all that stuff just went away. It's like other players taking stuff that you might want. Go figure. Um, right, they sweep. Then, do they have two glory? No, they only have one. So just move one, skip over me, three. And if they had moved here, then I'd be even more bummed because they'd be blocking me from that. But anyway, there they are. Um, so that was their turn. It is my turn. And now, like back at the beginning, I get to move, play, and gather. So, um, right. And first of all, I think I will play me again. Because I've got my wild. And so, I get some more guile. Yay. And, uh, again... Read in the small print. Gain the top correction accessible or pay a guile and a mite to meld. So that's interesting. I can meld any old place, although I've already found two places. Anyway, so I'm just going to and grab this. Boom. So, yay. Again, now each one of these is worth two points. Now, of course, me, I might start feeding those corruption to my corrupt monsters so I can complete quests later on. I'm throwing points away. But on the other hand, it makes it... Although... Oh, oh whoops, by the way. 
New stuff should have come out after the sweep. Forgot about that. Speaking of, there's a quest and an item and another meteor. The Yellowstone. Okay, so anyway. So I got my guile. I'm doing this. I cleared that out. I've revealed that. That was me playing a card. Now, I will gather. And since I'm here, I don't even have to move. I'll, I'll go on ahead and gather right here. And um, although do I want to... Well, remember, here's the thing. I don't have... I need a bunch of workers because I've got all these cards and I've only got one wild worker. I mean, this is this is taking off so fast. But that's okay. I'm going to go on ahead and eat my callstone. Or, I'm sorry, eat. Meld. I'm going to use this power that I've revealed to meld my callstone, which says get one uh, buck for every... And, yo, know, I can only get three. I've got two. If I, if I get another five, this would be a little bit better, but I'm pretty happy with it right now. I just want to take advantage. This is a race game, after all. So I will meld that. There we go. And I get two uh, bucks, i.e. points, that I just scored. Okay, and then the next time I meld, I'll get to activate the new thing I meld, plus I'll activate this again. So if I don't eat all my corruption, this is going to add up to be quite a bit. So anyway... So that was me playing a card, gathering, and now I got to move it, move it. Let's see what we find. Okay, we find a grab a card adjacent. So get this card or this card. All right, and that's my third explore token. Speaking of which, by the way, folks, I only need two more explore tokens and I'll get my first glory done. Um, right. So uh, what do I want to grab? It's a quest or a quest. This one needs me to go to location 17. This one needs me to go to location 18. Neither of those have been revealed, but I don't care because rather than hack the guardian robots, the robot guardians, I might just feed the robot guardians to my um, my uh, my little buddy. Or rather than talking with the protectors of the cave, I just might have my little buddy eat the protectors of the cave so that I can um, score these. Now, which means, the interesting thing is, me as a character, normally to complete quests, you've got to spend resources and um, you know, then get a reward when you're standing at the right place. Me, I can save my resources for vanquishing. Not that I need that. I mean... So really, what I can really do with this character is just save up, never use my resources, find Tarkovsky's lair, and nail it right out of the gate. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so I'm going to get to take one of these. They both give me powers, I should say, as well, um, before I finish the quest. This one is uh, you know gain a strength per worker. This is gain the ability of any other active card. Oh, I like this one more to activate my purple ability since I haven't found a purple thing yet. So I will leave this one here. This will go into my discard pile or my active area. A new thing will come out. Right, and thanks, explorers. And what do I get? I have found the old mining town, where, of course, there is rampant corruption. See what we got. It's Is it a five? Oh my gosh, folks. The chicken cup loves me, I swear. There are things in here other than fives, including, by the way, some uh, new tokens. I think, can you see them right there? Yeah. Some twos. Which, um, you know, if they come out, they can really, um, you know, make a bigger, taller stack of corruption to punch through than normal. But anyway, there's another five. I want to get that five, please, so that I can max out the ability of my melded meteor. All right. So, but anyway, that was it. I played, and then I gathered, and then I moved. Um, right. So, and I've got, and I'm almost to where I could start getting some workers. Uh, but that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then my buddies say, hi, move our timer up. Give us our second glory. Yay. And hey, do we have two glory? Yes, we do. Yes, they do. Which means rather than just having blue move two spaces, they're actually going to explore. And now when they work, they can go up to three spaces to reach what they want. But if what, what they want is right where they are, they'll just do it. There's an explore token right here. So here's a token I don't get. And in the original solo game, it's like, ah, okay, easy come, easy go. But not getting these tokens, that's painful. So anyway, off went that token, and they have explored and found a mountain pass, which um, needs to have at least eight corruption on it. Um, so what did they get? They got a four, and then a two. Oh, there's a two. So they need another one to get up to eight, and there's a three. So there's a lot of corruption to be able to have another place to meld our meteors, but that's okay. I've already ensured there's two places to do that in the center part of the board. Okay, so that was it for blue. And they say, hey, do I have three? No, I don't. So just move two. One, two, wrap around, off they go. And I am up again. You know, I think I'm cheating. 
I've only played myself twice, and I did start with one extra. Yeah, I must have given myself. All right, sorry. Folks, again, um, sometimes I say to watch the Klingon subtitles to point out the text of what I'm correcting. Sometimes I, my corrections need correction. I think I cheated there, giving myself too much goggles. I should have only had one plus two more. Anyway, though, what am I going to do? So I'm torn. Normally, I'd say, I'm not going to explore anymore. I'm going to come over here because I need red and green workers to be able to activate my um, my hero stone that lets me discard a card to gain its core value. So just like, you know, discard. That's pretty nice. Um, or my hover coil, which is whenever you move through an opponent's location, that player and you get a buck. So it gives me a reason to move through my AI buddies and ultimately the corrupted mech as well. So those are nice. But by the same token... Every time I explore, I get a benefit. And if I'm lucky, they're good benefits. And if um, I get two more, I can get my first. I mean, rather than going for seven workers, I haven't gotten any workers yet. But I'm only two away, two more explorers, and I'll have my glory. And then the corrupt mech will come out. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm, in, I'm inclined to go back up this way. Keep on looking for my purple worker buddies to activate my purple powers. Because I do have two cards with purple powers, right? I think I only have two. Is that correct? Yeah, just my two starting cards. Rather than going for workers. Oh, no, no, on the flip side, I could come back over here. But, you know, I'm just as likely here or here to... Um, I'm going to explore. I, I, I love that exploring is just more fun, more exciting now. So what am I going to do? I'm going to move and either play a card or gather... Hmm. Let's go on ahead and move and gather, and let's just see what we find are up here. All right, so first of all, what do I get? Draw a card. All right, and uh, this one means just draw it blind. Boop. And what do I get? I've got the Tesla pistol, which needs another red worker. Sooner or later, I'll go get some workers, but I'm doing pretty good without them so far. So anyway, so that was moving. Uh, let's see what I find, and hopefully I gather a purple worker. No, I don't. I get a bunch of guile at the research base. Oh, I should have gone the other way, but how could I know? All right, and meanwhile, there is four plus one. Not much guy, I'll need a lot of strength to vanquish that. Um, all right, so anyway, but what do I get? I gathered here, I get two more guile. So now I am up pretty good, and I do have vanquish cards, all right. And so that was it for me. I moved and gathered. Alrighty, my buddies say hi. Move our timer up. We don't have three, so he just moves one. Uh, this one says, oh, just run. One, two, three. Okay, that's it. No sweeping. And now, I'm going to explore one more time. Uh, but I can... I Oh. Alright, no, I only have three steps. I was going to say, I could go one, two, three, four. Because that's the interesting thing about the Automa. You can move through them to get to places normally you couldn't get. But I can only move three. I am going to explore, though. Um, right? So that means I'm going to explore and play. I'm going to come up here, get my fifth. And, hey, folks, you know what that symbol is. Refresh your cards and workers. No complaints there. Get my worker back. Get my cards back. And so far, look at everything I've accomplished with only one worker. I'm already at the northern end in just, what was this, like three or four turns? And it's the stormy sea. And let's see, there is a four plus a three plus a three. All right, so what was it? I moved and played. And what do you know, folks? I got some cards to play and a worker to play them with. All right, so what do I want to play? And again, I could activate any of these with that wild worker. Um... Shoot, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to save myself, though, because I want to come back here and grab this level 5, right? I don't want to waste my time getting those corruptions um, you know, or using that power. So I'm not going to play this. I've hardly been looking at what my other cards are, and I could do any of them. Um, right, so I could get a Vanquish immediately, and whenever I Vanquish, the final corruption... Right, okay, so here's the... I could Vanquish. I could Vanquish. I mean, I've got a lot here. I could go on ahead and use my pistol, Vanquish all of this stuff, right? Because I've got... No, I don't have six guile. I only have five guile. Shoot. So that'd be kind of wasteful. Um, and I won't get the benefit. So no, I don't think it's time to use the pistol. What about the... Right, activate the ability of any other... Of any other active card. Which are none. I don't have any. So not a good time to duplicate an existing ability. Uh, all right, so whenever you move through an opponent's location, so um, this would just be in play. 
Um, right? If I tried to move through, and, and he's getting close, so I could make some money off of that. Plus, I'd get to do a move right now as well. So that's not bad. Uh, so I could get back down here and start getting some workers. So the hover coil, that's temp tempting. Or discard a card to gain its core value. Um, you know, just get some more stuff. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I have not done enough. That's melding, right? To rescue a previous card. So I can't get that benefit. Don't think I care for that right now. Do a vanquish again. Again, I do not have enough. And I, I don't have, I haven't melded enough. So I wouldn't get the benefit off of that. Or activate a face-up purple ability. Um, or trash a corruption to tuck a quest. So I could trash one of these fivers to get a quest tucked, um, which is this one, which means I'd be giving up the ability to duplicate other cards, which is a pain. But on the other hand, I'd have my first of four quests tucked. Um, plus, remember, the more quests you tuck, the, uh, the more your glory is worth at the end of the game. Now, the thing is, if... I have my buddy eat the robot guardians by giving up one of my um, my current corruption. I'd lose that ability, and I would not get the ability to um, you know get an item by spending. So I'd be skipping a lot of stuff there. So that's all tempting, but no, I think I'm going to go with the original one, the one that made the most sense. Um, after getting that free refresh, I'm going to pay. I'm going to activate this, and this says, "Hey, get some um, some might, some strength, whatever it is. Do a move." One, two, three. So I'm down here at the sawmill. And um, as long as this is out, whenever you move through an opponent's location, start doing. Did I did I want to do that? Did I want to go one, two? No, but I have to go through. I can't quite move through them. Oh, I could. I could go like this. One, two, three. Because remember, you can move through them. That's a special thing for the solo game. And um, that means I'd make a dollar and I'd get another explore. Wow! And that's what I'm going to do, folks. I'm just going to keep pushing the no worker agenda. So um, off of this, I got that free move. And every time I move through somebody, I make an extra, another point. And I've made it over here, which means I've gotten another explorer. Which, hey, by the way, is just two points. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. So let's go on ahead. In fact, I think I can... Can I jump up to a five yet? No. Um, I'm going to be a four. So let me go on ahead and uh, take those threes and put a three plus one. Four coins that fast. All right. Boom. And um, right. And then what did I find? I found something. Finally, I found a place. I found an ice cave. My purple corrupted brethren will join me. Plus, I'll make points off of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So that was my turn. Now. I need to find a place to be able to brag uh, so that I can show off that I've done so much exploring. But I'll worry about that in a bit. My buddy says, hey, do we have one glory? Yes, we do. Then go on ahead and just discover this. Whatever it was, it's gone. And they found the encampment. And then the other one says, okay, I'm just going to move one. And boom, now I can't get there until they move out of the way. Just like a regular player. Oh, and shoot, I keep forgetting to put the corruption in. Alrighty, so there's a four, plus a three, Urgh. plus a four, ouch, that's expensive. And over here, there is a three, plus a two, plus a three. All right, a lot of strength to vanquish all that stuff. So I am up again. Have we revealed any place that I can brag no humble brags, or what? What's the what's the term? Um, it's what is it that I want to do? I want to boast, boast. I have not found a boasting zone. Need to find a boasting zone. There's going to be one amongst these, and uh, I don't think any of my character, uh, none of my cards let me boast, do they? So I've still got to keep on searching, folks. I do need to come down here. And get some more workers. I mean, because I can only take my one super worker so far. Although so far, it's taken me pretty far, I gotta say. Uh, but I need to go boasting. And uh, and then, once I do, the corrupted mech will appear. Now here's the deal, folks. I've shown you pretty much everything except the corrupted mech. If you'd like to see how that works, then go on ahead and hit that eye in the top right 
corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes um, to go to the extended play where the Corrupted Mech will make its presence known. Or instead, if you just want to hear some final thoughts about this new expansion and what I like and what I don't like, you can go to Final Thoughts. It's your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.